Introducing to you an excerpt from William Shakespeare's famous romantic comedy, The Merchant of Venice. Shakespeare presents an artist's world in which life is not a bed of roses. The lottery of caskets in the play takes place in an imaginary place called Belmont, where fortune prevails and every outcome depends on sound judgment. Shakespeare is successful in conveying that appearances can be deceptive. In Belmont lives a beautiful, intelligent, and a rich heiress called Portia. Her future is to be determined by the lottery of caskets devised by her father on his deathbed. According to his will, Portia must marry the man who chooses among the three caskets, gold, silver, and common lead, the one which contains Portia's portrait. Choose. I can neither choose the one I like nor refuse the one I dislike. For my wishes in life are controlled by the desires of a father who is no more. Is it not hard, Marisa? Your father was a pious man, and such good men have inspirations at their death. The lottery of caskets which he has devised will no doubt be rightly chosen by the person whom you will truly love. Suitors from far and wide come to Belmont to try their luck. Devised by my former lord, Lord Belmont. Here are three caskets gold, silver, and pathetic lead. One of the caskets bears the portrait of our beautiful lady, Portia. If you choose the correct casket, you will marry Portia. But, 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 may God help you to choose the correct casket, for if you miss, there will be no miss. Neither now nor ever. Upon your honor, you must swear that first, you will never marry. Second, you leave this place immediately. And third, you tell no one about your choice of caskets. The secret must go with you to your grave. Here comes the Neapolitan prince, who talks nothing but about his horses. Horses, horses, horses. All I can think of a horse is, and I wish I were one myself. Hold on, I'm doing something, my dear, can't you see? And who could show a horse better than me? I am the best. Here comes Don Palatine. Look at the frown on his face. Stories make me melancholic. I like them. But I don't remember when I last smiled. Oh, my gloom, my gloom, how unpleasant. If you do not want me, choose anyone you wish. How does it matter to me? I had rather be married to a death's head with a bone in his mouth than to either of these. God, defend me from these two. What about the French Lord, Monsieur Le Bon? I am 
regardless of what lies within. If it would be the worst thing that could happen, should happen. I should not accept him. I will do anything, Marisa, before I marry a sponge. You need not fear, lady. All of these suitors have decided to go back home for their fear that if they choose the wrong casket, they will never get to marry anyone for the sake of their honor. I am glad that this parcel of boers are so reasonable for there is not one among them whose absence I would regret. Here comes Prince of Morocco, overbearing and arrogant. I am brave, courageous and a valiant warrior. I swear by this sword with which I slew the Shah of Persia that I would look into the most fierce eyes or even fight a lion just for you, my lady Persia. Please do not judge me upon my complexion. I am not entirely moved by external appearance which attracts a young lady. Besides, the lottery designed by my father prevents me from choosing a man of my liking. I thank you for this. Lead me at once to the caskets, for I need to try my luck. Portia leads Prince of Morocco to the place where the caskets are kept. What says this lead casket? The one who chooseth me shall I hazard all he have. Must give and get what in return. Take a risk for lead. A noble mind would never shoot so low to such worthless things. I will not give anything nor risk anything. What says the silver casket? The one who chooseth me shall get as much as he deserves. Well, I deserve the lady. But let me once read the golden inscriptions too. The one who chooses me shall get what many men desires. Why, that is the lady whom all the world desires. Never such a gem as my lady can ever be found in something less pure than pure gold. Get me the keys. I choose the golden casket. Farewell, Portia, for a loser shall depart. The prince of Aragon has arrived. He desires to be led immediately to the caskets. Hmm. <laughs> ah, what a common metal. Lead must appear as attractive before it makes me risk anything. Um, gold? What many men desire? Here many may mean the foolish majority who choose only by external appearances, not knowing more than their foolish eye can show them. <laughs> what about silver? Who chooses me will get as much as he deserves. Hmm, that is well said. Because who will try to cheat fortune and win something without merit? I shall take that which I deserve. <laughs> Bring me the key of this casket and unlock my fortune without delay. You pause too long for one who has found good fortune. Oh, how unlike Portia is this portrait? 
Did I deserve no more than the head of a fool? Is this my price? I came to woo Portia with one foolish head and now I return with two. What misfortune? What deception? Oh, these headstrong fools, when they choose, the wisdom of their superficial knowledge makes them move. The old saying is true, to be had and to be married are decided by faith. As Portia and Nerissa are grateful to the one who decides their destiny, there arrives an ambassador of love, announcing the arrival of his master. May it be Bassanio, if such is thy will. Bassanio, the young Venetian scholar and a soldier that came hither in the company of the Marquis of Montferrat to see my dad? Yes, madam, he of all men that ever my foolish eyes were looked upon was the most deserving of you. Indeed, it was Bassanio who had arrived with gifts and courtesies as befits a noble man. Portia is afraid that Vasanyu may choose the wrong casket and all her hopes of marrying the one worthy person would be dead. I request you, O Vasanyu, to wait a day or two before risking the final choice. I pray you, my lady, do let me make the choice, for in the present condition I live in agony. Bassanio does not desire to delay the matter. He is led by Portia to make his choice. External show has no real value, yet the world is misled by outward show. Outward adornments are treacherous shows to a dangerous sea. So shining gold, which King Midas could not eat, I shall have nothing to do with you, nor with you, O Silver. A pale and ordinary slave, a medium of exchange of money from man to man. But I choose you, O lad, of small value. You seem to threaten rather than promise anything. You move me more than any elegant words could do. I choose you, and may the result lead me to happiness. O oh, excessive joy, I feel your blessing too strongly. Make it less. Lest I suffer from excessive joy. Lady Portia's portrait, who had a picture so near creation. I am standing here doubting whether what I read is true until it is confirmed and approved by you. Dear Bassanio, this house, these servants, and this same myself are yours, my lord. I give them and myself to you with this ring. Congratulations, my friend. May I also announce my engagement to this beautiful lady, Narissa. That was a surprise. A good one. Bassanio marries Portia and Graciano marries Narissa on the same day. Outward appearances are liable to be deceptive. This principle is best demonstrated through the lottery of caskets. The lottery ordeal has been used to test the sincerity and character of these suitors. Bassanio's right choice of casket shows an appreciation of the dangers of judging by appearance. The idea is fully conveyed by the phrase, all that glistens is not gold. Oh,